Apple's WWDC or the Worldwide Developers Conference just finished and two huge things happened. First, Apple gave developers one more reason why they shouldn't make iOS applications. And second, Apple is finally launching a full-scale attack on passwords. 안녕하십니까? Nicolas and let's get started. When iPhone and Android first came out, developers had to make apps if they wanted to access features such as the geolocation of the phone, cameras, contact information, file system, Bluetooth, among other things. But since then, browsers have become really, really powerful and all the things that I just mentioned before can be done directly in the browser using only JavaScript. So now if we take a look at the apps that we have installed in our phone, we might see that apart from games, a big number of those apps don't really need to be an app. And instead, they could actually be just a website. Google understood this very early on and they have been one of the strongest supporters of PWAs. PWA means Progressive Web Application, which basically means a website that doesn't feel like a website and it feels more like a mobile app instead. When you make a PWA, your users can install that website on their phone. Install means that they can save a shortcut to your website in their home screen. But it won't look like a shortcut. It will look just like an app that was downloaded from an app store. When the user taps on the icon of a saved PWA, a browser window will open. But because it's a PWA, the navigation bar of the browser will be completely hidden, making it look like a real mobile app. PWAs are also offline friendly. We can cache some assets on the phone, meaning that if the user opens the PWA when they are offline, the app will still open like a native app would, maybe showing some previous downloaded data or showing something saying you are offline the way, let's say, YouTube does. They are also working on something called the Periodic Background Sync API that will allow PWS to fetch data in the background even when the PWA is not open. But the killer feature of PWAs is that they can send push notifications to the phone of the user like a real app would, no matter if the website is open or not. And the best of all is that because it's just a website, we don't have to go through the review process to put our apps on any app store. I know this all sounds too good to be true and it actually is because there is one problem, a big one. PWAs work amazingly well in Android phones, but not so much on iOS. And this makes sense. Apple is scared. Apple is threatened by PWAs. Apple makes billions of dollars from the commissions they charge to developers on their app store. They don't want websites to be as powerful as their apps. This is why the implementation of the features needed for PWAs in iOS goes at turtle speed. If you use iOS, it does not matter if you choose to use Safari or Chrome or Firefox or whatever it is. They might look different, but the browser engine in iOS is controlled by Apple. Because of this power, it is still not possible to have PWAs with web push notifications on iOS. They know that access to push notifications is one of the reasons why some companies choose to make an app instead of making a website. For years, it has been possible to make PWAs with web push notifications on Android devices, but it's still not possible on iOS. Until now. Well, actually, no, it's until 2023, but it is still good news. On the WWC, Apple has finally announced that they are going to be implementing and releasing all the features and APIs required to bring web push notifications to the Apple world. It will happen first in the desktop with Safari and the latest version of macOS, which is macOS Ventura, that is coming this fall. And then in 2023, web push will finally arrive to iOS and iPad OS. Now it's just an announcement. We have to wait and see if they actually deliver on it, but it's very good news for the web. Now web push is very cool and all, but the thing that excites me the most is to see how Apple is pushing for a world without passwords. Before we look into that, please remember that if you want to become a developer and you want to do it for absolutely free, all you have to do is click the link below. There you will find free courses on JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Redux, GraphQL, Firebase, and even Go. 
The courses are absolutely free, so just click the link below and I will see you there. It is not very often when we hear that Google, Apple and Microsoft are all working together on something that is exactly what's happening right now. The tech giants are all aligned in the goal of making passwords a thing of the past. On this WWDC, Apple announced the general availability of pass keys. That is the tech that will bring passwordless authentication to Mac, iOS and iPad. The reason why companies like Google, Apple and Microsoft that are usually competing with each other are working together in this is because passwords absolutely suck. Passwords cause all sorts of problems and headaches for users and developers. When creating a password, people need to make them secure with numbers, uppercase and special characters. This leads to people reusing their passwords in multiple websites because it's hard to create a secure, strong, long password for every different website that we use. Which means that if one website gets hacked and attackers gain access to the password, they can just try the same password in many other websites and they might take over multiple accounts. Passwords are also pishable, which happens when attackers send an email with a link to a website that looks like a real legit website, hoping people get confused and enter their real email and password. To fix the problems with passwords, the tech industry has come up with many different authentication layers. Some websites ask you to give them your phone number so they can send you an SMS with a verification code, which is something that also could be hacked using something called SIM swapping. There is also a huge industry of password managers created to store all your passwords and generate a unique password for every different website. But that is just centralizing all your passwords in one place. What happens if your password provider gets hacked? But what if instead of adding all these layers to try to make passwords strong and verification and all those things, we can just get rid of passwords altogether? FIDO, which stands for Fast Identity Online, is an organization that creates standards to reduce the password usage. And those are the standards that Apple, Google and Microsoft agreed to implement. Passkeys is how Apple is implementing those standards and this is how it looks like from the point of view of a user. When going to a website and wanting to create an account, the website will ask you if instead of using username and password you want to use a passkey. If you do, the website will show you a QR code. Scanning this QR code will create a passkey and log you in. The next time you want to log in on that website, because the passkey will be synchronized between your phone and your computer, all you have to do is authenticate using Touch ID and you can log in again. As you can see, no password needed. For the user, the authentication flow is super simple. All you have to do is prove that you are the owner of your computer or your phone using the Touch ID or the facial recognition. Using passkeys, developers don't have to handle anything secret from the user. So if there is a leak of data, the accounts won't be compromised. Passkeys are also unpishable because your phone will generate a unique passkey for every different website. There is no risk of giving the wrong passkey to the wrong website. And they are also proximity based. When scanning the QR code, your phone has to be close to the computer that has that QR code. This is done using Bluetooth, which means that a remote attack, like an attacker sending you a QR code on your email, won't work. Passkeys can also be shared between devices and since they are based on the FIDO standard, they are cross-platform as well. Now let's take a quick look at how Passkey works behind the scenes because it's actually super, super cool. When you scan the QR code to log in with Passkey, what is happening is that your device is generating a public key and a private key. This private and public key are unique for each different website. But the private key will always stay in your device the public key will go to the server of the website where you are logging in. Your public key isn't a secret. It can be seen by anyone. And even if they see it, they still won't be able to log into your account. We can get the public key from the private key, but we cannot do the opposite. We cannot get the private key from the public key. The private key never goes to the server. It stays in your device. When you want to sign in using pass keys, the server will send you a challenge created with your public key. The only thing that can solve this challenge is the private key, the one in your device. The solution is sent back to the server, not the private key. To understand this in an easier way, imagine that the private key is a key 
and the public key is a lock. When we want to log in, the server gives us a closed lock. With our private key, we're going to open that lock and we're gonna give that open lock to the server. This shows to the server that we have access to the private key, but we actually never have to give the private key to the server. Just to be clear, Apple did not invent this. What they announced is that they are implementing the standard in their ecosystem. Passkeys are a really, really good solution for authentication. Here you can see how passkeys protect us against many of the problems of using memorized passwords or password managers on SMS verification codes. I think it's pretty cool and I cannot wait to use it to log into all my websites and to implement it in my own website so you can log in with it. Let me know in the comments what do you think of web push notifications finally coming to iOS? Are you happy it's finally here? Did you ever make an iOS app just to have access to notifications? And what about past keys? How cool is that? Thank you so much for watching. Stay free, stay happy, stay healthy. Eat gimji, kamzamida, saranghayo. See you on the next one. Bye bye.